Thank you so much for coming out tonight for our adult summer reading grand finale party. Yes, okay, I'll try to be louder. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as some of you, well hopefully all of you know, this summer we have been asking people as they read books to write reviews for those books and then place them in this basket that was on our welcome desk all summer and tonight we are actually going to have a drawing for the brand new iPad based on how many reviews you put in the basket. And I asked John right before this if he would be the one to draw and he agreed to do so after the event. And that way I figured no one will get mad at him if they don't win, but they get, get mad at me. <laughs> I'd like to just briefly mention that programs at Darien Library are made possible by our annual Friends of the Library campaign. So thank you so much for your continued contributions to make programs and our collections available to the community. Tonight's guest is the owner and chef of the Sono Baking Company in South Norwalk, Connecticut, which opened in 2005. For many years, he worked at Martha Stewart's magazines and television and radio shows. He was also the host of the PBS show Everyday Baking. A third generation baker with 30 years of experience, he worked at River Cafe, Le Bernardin, and Four Seasons before opening his own bakeries. He is a graduate of the Culinary Institute of America and author of the Sono Baking Company cookbook. And to just give you a little idea as to how much Rosanna, who works at Barrett Bookstore and I, wanted him to come tonight, uh, last winter we were in a meeting at Random House and a couple nights before the meeting where we were going to tell them how great Darien is and how much we wanted John to come and uh, do an event for his new cookbook, Rosanna emailed me and she's like, what do you think about baking recipes from his cookbook for the publicist? Is that too much? And I was like, no, I'll definitely do it. So I, book I cooked brownies. She made some kind of like lemon meltaways. Where is Rosanna? Oh, sorry. Did, what did you make? Meltaways? Some kind of meltaways. I remember what they were, though, because one of the publicists emailed me and asked where the recipe could be found. <laughs> so I think that we did make a little bit of an impression. So luckily, it all worked out, and he's here tonight. So please join me in welcoming John Baricelli. Thank you. I know a lot of faces. A lot of people were here last time, I believe. Um, nothing much has changed. I think it's about two years since we were here. Was it two years? What were you? About two years. That's how long it takes to do a book. So if I look tired, um, <laughs> I was just saying that I, I don't even, I don't even, I haven't even sat down and looked at this myself. It's, it's still a little um, overwhelming for me. Um, I am happy with it. It's, it came out beautiful. Ben Fink is probably one of the best photographers, and I can't give him enough credit. Um, my staff worked very hard on it. Um, my family, of course, suffers. Uh, it, we do a lot of the work at home, at work. Uh, it's, it's constant. There's phone calls. There's editing. And, um, I, I guess I get a little emotional, but um, the, the, I think it was December 17th, right before Christmas, um, the editor said, last call, anything you want to change. And um, my brother Michael is dying of cancer. And uh, I dedicated the book to him. So when I opened the book, I had completely forgotten about it. And he had passed away already. And, um, so you know, it, it's very personal. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. Books are very personal. You're sharing your life. It's not just a recipe. It's a story. It's part of, um, I was just saying, 36 years I've been baking um, professionally, since I'm 17 years old. I'll be 52 this year. So if I'm doing the math right, is that right? Something. Um, and and every I just opened a book to a sweet corn ice cream, and I can remember the day that I developed that recipe at the Elms Restaurant in um, Ridgefield. And who came that night, which is how I met Martha, was Martha Stewart. She came to dinner that night, and she had the sweet corn ice cream. We had a conversation, and next thing I knew, I was working for her. And, and it's, you know, like you forget about these things and you, you open up a book and then it's like, wow, really? You know, like your life just flashes right back in front of you. So um, I'm very happy the way the cover looks. Um, it goes great with book number one, I, I guess we can call it. Um, the thing about the seasonal baker that's really nice is that the recipes are very approachable. Um, a lot of ice creams, a lot of sorbets, um, stuff the kids can do in the family. I guess lately I've been spending more and more time at home um, 
kind of because the storm is coming, um, we're opening a third store. And um, I can envision not being at home at all for a little while. So uh, I've been actually cooking a lot more at home and baking and, and doing the things and, and kind of following what I tried to do in this book, which was to make baking part of the family and bringing the family back together. I'm not the first one to try this, but I am one that um, uh, really I believe in it. I think that sitting around the table, whether it's for a half an hour or 15 minutes at the end of the day and going over what everybody's done for the day, um, even if you let it go right through your head, you know, all right, you weren't playing at the swings or, you know, whatever. But just, you know, the fact that you're sitting at the table together and eating a meal is very, very important for the family. And um, I, I can't emphasize that, uh, the importance of that to me. So. Um, I'm just going to go through this slideshow because I haven't seen this yet, so you guys have to be a little bit patient. Fran did it yesterday, and I haven't. Uh... So basically, what we did was every recipe in the book has a fruit or a vegetable in it, or several fruits and several vegetables in it. Not one recipe, whether it's dried or uh, we don't use canned. It's not frozen either. So it's either dried fruits or fresh fruits or um, fresh vegetables. But it was something that the editors felt was very important to the book, uh, considering it was called The Seasonal Baker. Um, I just want a little bit about me. You guys know all that stuff. You can look it up on the internet. That's like the least of the important things. What's important is, is what's in the book. And um, what you want to know about the book, we can get to after the book's over. If you don't remember, my grandfather, great-grandfather, and my great-grandfather's uh, wife was my stepmother. His original wife died very early in life. Um, she is on the left. She's tougher looking than he is, I think. <laughs> and uh, this was in uh, Havermeyer Street in North 8th in, in Brooklyn, Williamsburg. This is where my family landed when they came from Nola, Italy. Um, still there. The bakery is now, um, uh, the oven is not used, but the bakery is still there. It's actually a pizza place. Um, these are some of the places that I worked, of course. Uh, we uh, worked at the River, we, I worked at the River Cafe, was my apprenticeship, and then that propelled me right into the Culinary Institute, which, you know, uh, I was originally a chef. I worked down in New Orleans. I was a chef at a Marie Antoinette Hotel when I was working till 11, 12 o'clock at night every night, and uh, still getting up early in the morning, I just realized that I was a morning person, so I kind of switched into the pastry thing. When I graduated the Culinary Institute, I went to the Palace Hotel, and from there, um, I realized that that was it. That's where I learned how to make ice creams. So a lot of the ice creams in this book actually started in um, 1980 when I was at the Palace Hotel under Helmsley, Mrs. Helmsley, another um, icon. Um, the magazines that Martha put out were always high quality. The photographs were always outstanding, which is something that I tried to do in this book. Um, Martha always wanted Ben Fink to work for her and, and do some shoots. But for some reason, they never hooked up. And um, Martha always compliments the photographs when she sees them. Uh, a very, uh, this was the year we opened. Um, Sono Bakery kind of looks the same. Um, back then, we had no shades on the window. And the cakes in the showcases actually used to melt from the strength of the sun. <laughs> Things you learn, right? And we went through this last, last time also. It's basically the philosophy that Martha, um, Culinary Institute, all of my European chefs that I worked for when I was a kid, um, about starting with the best of everything, techniques. You know, bar none, I was taught by the best people. I was taught the right way. Um, I had a conversation uh, about puff pastry and what a pain in the butt it is to make, but to this day, we still make everything by hand. We still make everything the old-fashioned way. And we still have very minimal tools at Sono Bakery. There's nothing in my kitchen that you probably don't have in your kitchen, except for a sheeta, which um, rolls dough very thin. But uh, you can actually do that with a rolling pin. So this is what we basically tried to uh, do, which we talked a lot about. Um, Getting the kids involved, uh, you know, my son, my oldest son is 23 this year. And I still talk about the time when we were bicycle riding 
and he was probably eight or nine, and we ran into a raspberry bush, and I took off his helmet, which now you'd probably get arrested for, but I took off his helmet, we picked raspberries, and we went home and we made gelato, right there and then. And every time we, we, we have ice cream together, he always says, you know, that raspberry gelato, whether it was the way we picked the fruit and went home and immediately processed it into ice cream, or just the memory of it, um, it it'll always stick in our minds, but it was very sweet. So uh, making cooking and shared family activity, um, one of my, I'm gonna call stepdaughters, she doesn't eat anything. I mean, I can't get her to eat anything, but she loves to cut tomatoes, cut lettuce. Um, she's like my little you know, apprentice in the kitchen, you might say, until she cuts her finger off and then I'll have to stop it. But right now, she's very enthusiastic with a knife. Um, but, but she's good, and she loves making smoothies. She just won't eat them. You know, she'll, she'll make everything, but she just won't eat them. So. Uh, Getting her in the kitchen is part of what I was talking about. You know, it's that extra five or ten minutes you spend with each of the children. Um, uh, even my littlest one, he he loves to do anything, even if he just holds the rolling pin while I'm, while I'm doing something. You know, it's very sweet. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's 35, but it's actually what did I say? 36, 37 years. It's crazy um, since I started working at the River Cafe. Uh, I have a lot to be thankful for. I had, I had an excellent, so far, an excellent career. Um, so there's 150 recipes, which um, are all broken down into these really great chapters, muffins, very simple. We followed um, the same font as we did in the first book, very soft reading, very, very carefully laid out, um, tested beyond belief. Um, I think it was like $22,000 to test all the recipes. It's a crazy amount of money if you think of it. Um, but they work. That's the bottom line. And, um, you know, we have classics in there. We have really simple things like um, the panna cotta on the lower right hand corner. It's on a little um, uh, short dough cookie. It's really sweet. Uh, it looks complicated, but it's really just uh, two things it's the cookie dough and the panna cotta. And then, of course, the raspberry and the whipped cream. But, uh, very approachable, yet you have these really, you know, uh, professional-looking desserts, just like book one, but I think even simpler. Um, and with the seasons, we broke it down into like citrus and, um, you know, fall fruits, winter fruits, you know, everything. It was just really, we, we really did a great job. I'm very proud of, of myself and my staff. Um, and then we did a lot of savory stuff. You know, we did grilled pizzas, stuff that, again, Kids can make the pizza dough. They can stretch their own pizza. I wouldn't have them put it on the grill, um, but they have their own toppings. There's so many things kids can do as far as making pizzas. You know, uh, you can lay out five or six different toppings and two or three different kinds of cheeses, and, and, and on and on and on. Um, and and every every kid makes their own pizza, and they're all happy. It's not like you know you go to Domino's. Or, I hate to say that word. Um, wherever you go. We, like, we actually like the Naughty Dolphin in Fairfield. Um, but the Naughty Dolphin, you know, they have three kinds of pizza. It's pepperoni, tomato, or the other one. But here, you know, the kids can actually make their own. Um, we took a lot of shots at the farmer's market. That's on the lower right-hand corner. Um, Rose's Berry Farm. We use them a lot. We use um, almost all the vendors. At Sono Bakery, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, we shop pretty much for the rest of the week. We buy greens, we buy all the berries, all the fruits. Right now, prunes are in, the prune plums, the Italian prune plums. Um, so we try to give back to the market what we take from the market. We bring it back processed, cooked, baked, whatever. Um, we do these incredible vegetable tarts, which probably be in the next book. Um, but uh, again, right now, um, Fort Hill Farms. Uh, does anybody go to the Thursday market in Dairy, uh, um, Westport? Great market, right? Yes. Really nice market. Um, and we spend probably 40% of what we earn. So we're there for two reasons. We're there to sell our product, but it's also a marketing. People that don't come to Sono will go to the Westport Farmers Market. Um, and the product that we bring back from the market, we bring back to the Saturday market in New Haven. And it's like this vicious cycle. Buy, shop, cook, bake, bring it back to the market, bring it to the stores, you know, so. Um, 
everything that we do, we try to do to the best of our abilities. If anybody knows us or if anybody hasn't been to Sono Bakery, um, we just won Connecticut Best of Connecticut again, thir third year in a row, from the um, Connecticut Magazine, so we're proud of that. Um, again, I can't thank my staff enough. Uh, we're up to 32 people now working at the two stores, Westport and in um, South Nola. We're um, 1680 Post Road East, down by um, almost Southport. Okay, then that's okay. Yeah, um, it's a small little store. It's about 900 square feet, but it's um, really helping us out in the sense that uh, it gets the word out. Again, more marketing, more advertising. We're almost open a year. October. Will be a year. So anyway. Um, we had some nice people write some nice blurbs about us. Uh, everyone from Martha again to Dory Greenspan to uh, Matt and Rosado down in Brooklyn. Some of my friends that are, own a few bakeries down there. And Sarah Foster, dear friend from down south who used to work for Martha years ago. Always uh, remained in touch with her. And uh, uh, the book is here for sale. <laughs> which is, I think, why, part of the reason why we're here. Um, and if there's any questions, I'm going to be here signing books. And we also bought some treats. We bought um, a sour cherry chocolate chunk cookie. Um, and then we bought um, a fig and raspberry, what we call a pizza. It's a big sheet of, uh, it's what we bring to the farmer's markets all the time. It's a big sheet of almond paste with fresh fruit on top and a very thin layer of pet brise on the bottom. And it bakes up really crisp. And um, when you cut it, you can lift it up and hold it like a piece of pizza, which is why we call it pizza. Um, we sell probably um, $200 worth, which is about uh, 50 pieces during um, the Saturday market in New Haven. Uh, it sells very well. We use seasonal fruit only, some from California. Uh, we try to use as much local as we possibly can, but figs just don't grow here on the East Coast. Um, I am one to say that I try to buy everything locally, but it just doesn't work. You know, like I'm a big fig fan. Um, my son's in-laws down in Brooklyn, they have a fig tree, and when I'm down there, I get some figs, but it's never enough to make a, a big pizza like this. It almost takes, uh, it's about $50 worth of figs on this thing, just to make, so. Do you sell that in the West Coast market or only in New Haven? Um, only in New Haven for now. Uh, in the fall, we'll start selling it. It's been a little slow with the schools, you know, out. Now the schools are back, people are back. So we'll probably start doing them in the fall. But we're going to switch over, we'll do the apple. Um, Connecticut apples are in already. They're great, very crisp. Um, the Italian prune plums are in. What else is in right now? I think that's pretty much it on the stone fruit. So, any questions? Yes? Are you giving cooking classes at Sono Bakery? Yes, through Connecticut Bites. Now we're doing them through Connecticut Bites, CT Bites. You have to be a member and then you get onto their newsletter. Um, I think the next one is October 17th. Say it again? Oh, I'm not sure about that, no. actually. No, I don't think so. CT Bytes, B I T E S. Yes, it's a great. Um, actually, Amy was supposed to be here, but um, she booked out at the last minute. She come. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, right here. Uh, with the increase of sensitivity to um, gluten, uh, are you finding more of a need to include gluten-free recipes or to develop recipes for yourself? You know, we, um, we made a list the other day, and uh, there was about 12 items that we actually carry all the time in the bakery. But we're just not allowed to say that they're gluten-free because we bake in a gluten environment. Oh, yeah. oh. So I can't have these legal issues take over the health issues. I could say to you, unless you're extremely sensitive, you're not going to have a problem. But there's always going to be that one case where somebody, you know, has a problem. And then, so yes, we make a whole bunch, especially during the Jewish holidays. We make flourless, you know, flourless items and stuff. But then when we put this list together, it was actually like 12 items, and they're all awesome. It's not like you know you're skimping on anything. Uh, we do a chocolate mousse with a flourless chocolate roulade that is unbelievable. I mean, it's hard to believe that it's gluten-free, but again, you know, it's made with, uh, in a bread facility. We do a lot of bread, so there's always that mist around. Yes? Do you have a professional kitchen at home? Oh, no. 
Not at all. Not at all. Maybe Friday when, um, I don't know why somebody's coming Friday to look at it, but no, I'm going for a pool first. I have a big kitchen at the bakery. I don't need one at home. So, you know, I, I, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna go home and make puff pastry. I make it at the shop, I bring it home if I'm gonna make puff pastry. Um, I do make my doughs at home, the cookie dough, stuff like that. Patty makes great brownies, no problem. You know, all, all this kind of stuff. Um, and cooking is cooking, so you don't need a big, you know, we had a, we had a five burner, whatever it is, nothing special, GE profile. It, we just moved into a house, so we're gonna keep it like that. But I think pool is more of something that'll keep the kids in the backyard as opposed to. Yes? Uh, where is the third store going to be? Or is that a secret? The third store? Yeah. Uh, I, th I don't think it's a secret anymore because people keep asking me when we're opening. So it's in Sagatuck, down by um, the Welk, oh. um, right across the street where Doc's Coffee used to be. So um, they put up the walls today and we signed the lease about an hour ago. <laughs> uh, so I, I think we're doing it. I mean, the financing came through, and so yeah. We just need a better location than South Norwalk. South Norwalk is a four-day business. It's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We can't get anybody to come to South Norwalk. There's no businesses down there. It's very sad. It's such a neat neighborhood. Um, the people that live there go to the city to work. There's no retail, and all the restaurants open for dinner. So you have this void in the middle of the day, and it's just really yeah, nothing. Not yeah, not enough to sustain the kind of business we need to sustain. I mean, we have a 5,000 square foot plant there, so we need to utilize it. Um, we need to. Uh, we close at three o'clock, so if that means anything, you know, what kind of? What, yeah. So are you going to close that? No, no. Oh. Okay. No, that'll be the production. For, that's where we bake everything. Yeah, but it's still going to be. Yeah, and we'll keep it open on the weekends, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe have a limited menu. We're open seven, people don't realize. We're open seven days a week, yeah. from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m., on the weekends till 5 p.m. We start at, um, we were just saying, <laughs> on Saturdays we start at 12 in the morning. Whoa. So I, that means, you know, you know, we're there from 12 in the morning straight through to probably 7, 8 o'clock at night. The place needs to breathe and clean and you know everything. And we are a very, very clean establishment. But you only get that way because you actually take a break and you know close it down and clean it. But it's very hard to um, sustain that kind of, on the equipment. I, we just had the seven year itch. Everything broke. Everything broke. So it was seven years, we're open seven years now. Um, the oven went down, everything went down. So I'm like, all right, I'm good for another seven years. So that's how they go. No, nothing's easy. Any other questions? Yes? You, you mentioned gelato and a lot of ice cream in the cookbook. Do you have to have an ice cream maker? And what do you recommend? Yeah, you, 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 you either that or a walk in freezer and you just stand inside and turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean. There are all these ice creams that you could put in a hotel pan and you scrape them and then you put it back and then, but they get very icy. So part of making ice cream, it, it's like threefold. Um, it's the formula, which has to have the correct balance of moisture to fat to what we call non-fat milk solids, which is a very technical term, but that's what is the oomph in the ice cream. So if it's vanilla, it would be the sugars and, but it, everything has to be in balance. So if you have that balanced mix, now you gotta freeze it. And the only way to do it is slowly churning it while it's freezing. So, you know, whatever method you use, whether it's the Cuisinart where you stick it in the freezer, then take it out, put your mix in, and then it turns. Or we have electric ones at home that, you know, actually, you know, it's like a, it's like a professional ice cream machine. You know, they're like $1,200. I don't recommend them because you use it once and then you'll see them at the garage sale two years a bit. So that's where I got mine from. You know, people buy them and they're like, you know. But anyway, so yeah, you, you do need the proper equipment to make. You know, like baking, you can get away with a mixer. You don't need a mixer. But ice cream, you really need that ice cream freezer. And a, a decent one. You don't need a great one. I mean, that $60 one, I, I've made great ice cream in that little Cuisinart one. I have a crooked one and made good ones. So I'll give you a crooked one and make fun ice cream. Yeah. Anything else? Yes? Is that apricots or peach? This is apricot and uh, plum. 
On the cover here, yes, it's apricot and plum. There's a raw shot, if you look through the book, um, there's a raw shot before it goes in the oven and then there's a, um, the, the final on the cover. Okay, yes, Hi. how are you? Good, I really like the coffee. Sure. It's a good friend of mine. He's been roasting for me for probably 25, 28 years. Unique coffee. We sell it at both stores. You can buy it one pound block. Um, he roasts for me. He UPSs it to me. He's in Staten Island. Um, he's a great roaster, very talented kid. He's not a kid anymore. We're not kids. We've been doing this for years now. <laughs> but uh, very, very successful. Jimmy, um, Jimmy Ferrara. Uh, and it's unique coffee. And I know Terry Lodge, what is that place called? Terry, Terry Market? They sell it in uh, Port Chester. They have like probably 10 of his flavors. Actually, our Westport store has about 10 different flavors now. So, anybody over here? Yes. What is your favorite thing to make and your favorite thing to eat? <laughs> Pizza and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny, I, we, we just had, um, we bought a fixer-upper, I guess you'll say, in um, Upper Fairfield, and uh, we, we had to redo the stone wall, so of course two Italian guys show up and they're doing the stone wall, and then we start talking pizza. The guy owns a pizzeria, so he goes from stonework in the day to a pizza shop at night. So I actually bartered with him last night to go and teach him how to make um, uh, heroes, you know, uh, uh -huh. whatever the bread is. Some people call it hoagies and whatever. So he's going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do that for him and he's going to fix my mailbox because it was on a stone wall and a truck came by and blew it apart. And <laughs> so, um, but we talked pizza the whole night, probably till 8, 8.30 when they finished the walkway last night. And, uh, so what is the secret for doing it on the grill? To oil it first, throw it on? Or yes, what? absolutely. Um, I use a vegetable, you can buy an extra virgin olive oil spray for the grill, but I once I put it down, I brush it with olive oil and flip it immediately, brush it with olive oil, and then it's just like keep turning it. And then you can do those in advance, which is great, because then the kids can top them, and then you can actually either finish them in the oven, or you can put them back on the grill just to melt the cheese. But it's a great crust to use, like for salad pizza. Do you ever have salad pizza? It's like this new thing. It's not new, because I've had it for years and years. But it's new in the sense that, um, you could put anything on top and you got that, you know, almost like a non bread underneath. And the char grill gives it a nice flavor and stuff like that. So if I'm going to do grilled pizzas, I'll grill them all and then let the kids finish them. All right, are we ready to eat some um, fig and raspberry uh, pizza? So thank you very much. <laughs>